Hello everybody, this is Mike Newcomb from the Japan Society of New York and I'm at the 2009 New York Anime Festival and I have the opportunity to speak with author and lecturer Roland Keltz. Hi Roland. Hi, how you doing? Good. Thanks for uh, taking some time out of your busy schedule today to speak with me. Sure. Um, I can imagine uh, th this is probably not your first anime festival, right? <laughs> no, I've no, I've been to many now on both mm -hmm. the East and West Coast. Oh, wow. And yeah. so tip, uh, is it all in response to uh, your book, Japan America? Well, in part, yeah. I mean, part of it is, is book sales. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I also uh, appear on a lot of panels. Mm -hmm. And since I write frequently for uh, magazines and uh, actually for a newspaper in Japan, mm -hmm. uh, this gives me a lot of uh, material. Awesome. And so uh, one of the things that uh, I, I did want to ask you about, too, is uh, uh, based on your book, there obviously are a lot of uh, books about Japanese culture, maybe not uh, especially focusing on the topics you focused on in Japan, America. But what really uh, inspired you to decide to tackle uh, the concepts that you presented in it? Well, I think part of it was uh, personal because uh, as a half Japanese kid growing up in America, mm -hmm. um, for a long time, when I was a kid, Japan was anything but cool in the mm -hmm. United States. I mean, something like this would be improbable, <laughs> not impossible. Um, and I think I grew up thinking of Japan as this very distant place. I knew it was colorful because I went to Japan as a mm -hmm. kid. I knew it was creative and inventive. But my American friends <laughs> thought of it as a kind of robot society <laughs> where people ate raw fish yeah. and sat on strange grass floors <laughs> and uh, didn't have any room and got shoved into subway trains by white gloved conductors. <laughs> so it was, a, it was a pretty bleak image mm -hmm. of Japan. And, uh, and then, you know, in my adulthood, suddenly millions of Americans are queuing into this colorful, exciting, um, inventive uh, culture. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's exciting to me. Yeah, it, it truly is. Um, you, you've certainly seen a, a, a surge in, a, of uh, interest in Japanese culture, especially in the last decade, it seems. Absolutely. Um, but uh, so when you were conducting uh, research for uh, your book, did you come across anything uh, that really surprised you that you might not have, you know, that came out of left field for you or anything like that? Yeah, I think the biggest surprise and, and actually what became the, the basis for the book, mm -hmm. the uh, central metaphor of the book is the, the Mobius strip or the Mebia strip. And I used it because it seemed to me, as soon as I started conducting research in Japan, I kept bumping into American influences. Mm -hmm. All the way back to the very beginning, uh, really the father of anime and manga is a, a, an artist named Osamu Tezuka, created mm -hmm. Astro Boy, mm -hmm. most famously uh, here in the US. And uh, Tezuka, it turns out, was an enormous fan of Walt Disney. Mm -hmm. uh, so much so that he actually flew to the uh, United States to meet Disney at the New York World's Fair. Oh, wow. So, as I began to research this phenomenon in Japan, mm -hmm. I kept finding American influences and these exchanges going back and forth, where today you have uh, artists at Pixar in mm -hmm. California who lionize mm -hmm. Hayao Miyazaki mm -hmm. and Osamu Tezuka yeah. and treat those two artists as geniuses. So I, I thought it was this really, in a way, kind of inspiring story of mm -hmm. transcultural exchange mm -hmm. between two nations that don't necessarily at first uh, seem so close. Right. And so everything's g it is definitely coming full circle then. I, I, just I think so. I mean, now Astro Boy is about to be released as a Hollywood mm -hmm. motion That's picture right. just mm -hmm. uh, in a few weeks' time. Yeah. It's, it's really interesting, too, that um, a lot of that, uh, uh, everything coming full circle with the guys at Pixar really idolizing Hayao Miyazaki. You've gotten to meet him several times. Is that right? Yeah. In fact, I, I uh, did an onstage interview with him mm -hmm. in uh, California uh, a couple of months ago. And... Um, you know, he's, he's really a master. Mm -hmm. uh, Certainly and, is. <laughs> and a, an avuncular figure <laughs> on stage. Um, very charming. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think, happily, he seems uh, at peace with his work. You know, lots of times you meet artists in their later years and mm -hmm. they can be troubled or curmudgeonly and so on. <laughs> right. Uh, but Miyazaki-san seems to be at ease with the work he's doing. Mm -hmm. uh, he, enormously popular in Japan. Right. His, uh, his films top the box office. Uh, mm -hmm. Record-breaking figures. Uh, and I think he's comfortable with the level of success he's had overseas as well. Mm -hmm. You know, he doesn't treat it uh, as coldly as a business. It's a right. craft. And uh, so it's nice to see him also showing up in America. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, I, I know that um, for a lot of people, uh, when Spirited Away won the Academy Award for uh, Best Animated uh, Feature, that kind of really put anime into the American consciousness of 
say, you know, a really high art form, uh, I think. And um, as a result, uh, I'm starting to notice more, uh, not necessarily uh, anime uh, directors or writers and whatnot, but um, some writers too, like Har Haruki Murakami is um, several uh, books in, uh, I know in colleges are now being used to study as in literature courses. Um, so, and, and you've gotten to meet him too as well, right? Yeah, it's funny you mention uh, Murakami because I've actually, we've, we've become friends over the past decade or so, mm -hmm. and I've interviewed him several times. I also spoke to him on stage <laughs> in California less than a year ago, right. a similar setting, a live on stage interview. And uh, yeah, I think actually those two figures, uh, you know, obviously slightly different audiences, mm -hmm. uh, but are crucial uh, in a way, um, emblems of the interest Americans have right. in Japanese culture. Uh, Haruki Murakami has lived in America. Mm -hmm. uh, he uh, comes here to speak and give readings, and he is hugely popular yeah. uh, as a literary Certainly novelist. Is, yeah. uh, and, and then, of course, Miyazaki was just here uh, mm -hmm. a couple of months ago. So I think that's important, too. I think, um, I think more Japanese artists are realizing that the value of actually showing up in America. <laughs> you know, I think Woody Allen... Woody Allen once said or wrote that showing up is 80% of success. Right. <laughs> and, uh, and, I, and I think, you know, Japan doesn't really have that kind of model. Mm -hmm. uh, authors don't give public readings in Japan, mm -hmm. very rarely show up except on television yeah. uh, to promote their books. Uh, and likewise, artists like Miyazaki don't give speeches generally mm -hmm. in Japan. But I think they're realizing that in the United States, we have a, you know, a cult of personality. Mm -hmm. And to actually see the artist or the author right. in New York or in California or in Boston uh, really makes a difference to a lot of Americans. And that's really what this, you know, one of, one of the virtues of festivals mm -hmm. like this is that you have Japanese artists who fly all the way over from Tokyo right. uh, for the weekend. Yeah. Uh, and the fans, uh, the audience gets to actually see them in mm -hmm. the flesh. Yeah. And uh, I think that means a lot on, on both sides. It certainly does, and uh, you know, uh, there's there's kind of a uh, you know w along those lines of reasoning where Japanese uh, authors and directors are, are with those two in particular, Miyazaki-san and Murakami-san. Mm. Uh, is there anybody you feel might be entering the American consciousness soon? Since you have, it seems like you have the ear pretty close to the ground on a lot of these ideas. Um, yeah, I mean, I think uh, Natsuo Kirino, the mm -hmm. author of Out and Grotesque. Okay. Um, she's more of a I guess a horror slash thriller writer right. than, say, of course, Murakami. But I think her books have done very well. And I know she's come to the States and given some readings and so on. Mm -hmm. um, beyond that, I guess I would say, I mean, there, there are a number of manga, you know, uh, comic book artists mm -hmm. whose works are enormously popular. Yes. Uh, Naruto, uh, mm -hmm. One Piece, right. Bleach. Mm -hmm. And so I think those artists, you know, when they come over to the States, uh, uh, get you know, high recognition yeah, uh, and so on. But the the audience actually right now for manga and anime in America is quite young. Mm -hmm. At least a larger portion of the audience. Yes, you, can you can see. see. <laughs> you can see that here. And so I think it's exci what's exciting to me is you have these kids, really, mm -hmm. 13 to 15-year-olds, who are fascinated by a culture that is technically so far away. Right. Uh, so much so that they start actually learning about the other traditions in Japanese mm -hmm. culture, whether yeah. it's uh, the cuisine, uh, samurai, bushido right. traditions, um, and the language itself. Yes. And for Americans to be doing that, I mean, I, it's, it's inspiring to me because we're not <laughs> always such a globally minded nation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that the internet in particular, the technology uh, has opened up these avenues and it's great to see young Americans pursuing them. Yeah, so anime is a, is a good gateway uh, for young people into Japan. I think uh, it is. Sure. I think it is. And I think, uh, again, I meet, I meet more and more young Americans who are not only into anime and manga, but are studying the language, mm -hmm. um, saving up for a trip <laughs> to Japan and yeah. so on. And so that's, that, that's exciting.